everyone, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench, and we now have part three of this lovely little kit from Airfix. This is the Airfix K2 ambulance in uh, 135th scale, um, and this is part three. So if you haven't seen part one, part one is all about for beginners about reading instructions and blah 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 and tools and everything. And then part two, we actually got this far and built up the chassis. Um, so all is good there. So uh, we've, if you remember when we left part two, we'd glued this front piece on and we'd gone around with some Mr. Surfacer, which is like a liquid filler and basically just gone over the joints. So now it's time to give it a sand and see how it looks. So we can come in with a, a sander. In fact, I'm going to use this one on the inside because it's a big hard sander. Remember we use hard sanders for flat areas and soft sanders for round areas. So there we go. So you can see now we're sanding out, we're sanding away the Mr. Surfacer until we, so we can see the filled joint. Now I remember seeing there was a bit of a step because the front chassis section here, the legs were actually thicker than the, than the rest of the chassis. So that we've got a bit of a step to sand out there as well. There we go. So we can see the inside there is all nice and sanded and flush. You run across the top. Basically just keep going until we see the joint. What we don't want to do is, is cut away, you know, in, into the plastic too much. We just want to sort of basically blend it out so it all looks like one. Now that stick is too wide to go in there so I have to use this matador. Again, if you remember from part two, I'm using worn out sanding sticks because Mr. Surfacer, as you can see here, will clog your sanders. So be very careful. There we go. So that's that one sanded. You can see we've got a bit of a undercut in there. So we can kind of sand that out. There we are. That's a lot better. And then we'll do the same on this side. Remember there was a great big mould seam down the side of this front chassis rail as well. So that will probably be, there'll probably be some remnants of that left, left remnants, remnants of that left behind was what I was trying to say there. So there we go. You can see we've got a step here, that's because of that great big mould seam. And then we're coming underneath, and being careful not to um, not to damage the detail on those lovely little bump stops that are there, they're lovely. So we don't want to go damaging them. So there we are, we just run over the corners quickly just to soften them up. And there's our chassis all glued together and all blended in. OK, so you can see we've got a bit of a step there. I may need some more in there. We'll see what it looks like when it's painted. In fact, I'll probably put some more in there anyway. It's only on the outside, so it'll be easy to sand. You can see we've got a bit of a step there. So there we go. So that's um, that's the chassis done. Now we can look at getting this cross member in. Now this cross member, I've been playing with it. I think it only goes one way. Uh, I think the best thing to do when you're building yours is try it like that. See what you think, and then take it out, turn it around, and try it the other way and see if it fits better. Because I think, I think it has got a bit of an angle on it. It's very difficult to see. Now I've got this fitted in here with the ejector pin marks facing forward. So you can make your own mind up which way you want to put it. So basically I'm going to just glue that in now. If you remember I didn't glue it in initially because one I didn't want a great chunk of chassis sticking out of the bottom. I want everything to be nice and flat and two I wanted to be able to get in there to sand that joint. So there we go we can pull that together make sure it's nice and flush on the top. There we are. Now I think that's going to need a gentle I don't want to put a clamp on it or anything because I don't want to squeeze it together, but I do just want to hold it together like that. I think finger pressure will be enough just for the first few minutes.
There we go, I think Jess is going to bark. What I'm going to do is get a little bit of masking tape. Just put it across there. Just give it a gentle pull. Just to hold it, and that'll be better than if, if you clamp it, you run the risk of because a clamp is quite tight, you run the risk of the that cross member just collapsing and all the chassis will just fall in. So we've got a bit of tape on there just to hold it in place. And there we go. I'm going to leave that to dry. In the meantime, I'll put some Mr. Servicer on those joints and a bit more in there and get that sanded out. Right, all done. I've put some black Mr. Servicer there and sanded it out. So that's all done. I've also moved the camera in a bit closer for you, so I think that'll make things a bit easier for you to see. So we've actually completed step one of the instructions now, so that's all done. So now we can move on to step two, and here you can see we're fitting the dummy engine sump and bottom of the gearbox and the rear leaf springs. So I've got the engine and gearbox part off and cleaned up and everything. There was just a little seam around the back that I wanted to clean up. So that's all done. This is a sanding sponge. This is a skinny sponge. As I say, these are full flory ones. I don't think he makes them anymore, but you can get them from other places like UMP. Um, and there are also some Albion hobby ones, which you can get from premium hobbies. The trouble is they're very coarse. I've got them over here somewhere. I need to do a test on them. Um, they don't do a sort of soft sponge like this, but you can get these, these uh, infinite, infinity sticks. They're very, very wide, which is okay for that, but not very good if you want to get into tight places. But sponges are great for, um, you can see it's a soft, it's a soft sanding stick rather than this one, which is hard. Okay, so it's good. But if the trouble is with that, if you, if you sanded something like this chassis with it, you would end up rounding off all the corners even more than they already are. Now you can certainly go around with a sponge just to soften the corners after you've been sanding in areas like I have here. You can certainly go in with a sponge just to do that. But, um, so there we go. So this engine needs to be glued into the chassis and as we can see from the instructions there's a little recess in there. You can just see it if I can point it out with a pointer. There's a recess in here, not this big one here, this is for the radiator. This little one here, this one there is where the engine is going to go in. So it's got a little tab on the front of there that's going to hook under. It's going to hook into there and then go down in just like so. So that will sit in there like that. Okay, and then what we can do is come along with our extra thin cement. We can put a drop under the front, like that. So that's in that little slot. And then we can come along from the inside and just put a little drop down in there, and a little drop down in there. And then we can just look at it, make sure it's all centered. Just sort of eye it from underneath, make sure it looks good. And there you are. So that's our engine glued in. Now I noticed in the instructions here they're telling us to paint the engine the same colour as everything else, which we will do, but I think now I will go over with like a sky blue colour because I think I think in World War II I think engines were always painted this kind of sky blue colour, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think they are sky blue. So, I can always do a bit of research on that. Um, and now we've got to put, fit these rear leaf springs. Now, I have a slight issue with mine. If you remember when I did my review, here are the leaf springs here, part number seven and eight. And on one of mine, the pin was broken off. Now, I think the pin got broken off in the bag rather than in the tool. So yours might be okay. But what I've done here, you can see I've just drilled out the broken off pin and I've put a piece of one mil plastic rod in there. And then what I've done is drilled out the appropriate hole, I think it's that one, one millimetre, so it'll fit in there. Um, I didn't bother showing you that because that's way above beginner level stuff. If you want to see how to do it, I've done it in lots of other videos and stuff, where specifically you can ask in the comments below and I will show you in another video. Um, so here we need to be careful we don't get these springs mixed up because once you've got them off the sprue, they look very, very similar, but as you can see, they're not quite symmetrical. Okay, I don't think they're symmetrical, so we're going to be very careful here. So we'll take off D8 first. D8 is this one. So we can cut this away. 
take that one out of there. Okay, and we'll deal with one part at a time so we don't get them mixed up. Because the last thing you want to do is end up with, you might end up with having the, if you get the wrong part, you might end up having the, um, your ambulance looking like a drag racer with it all stacked up in the air. So here we are, we're going to use the knife now for the first time. What I'm going to do is just come along and remove that thing. Now, I am moving this towards my thumb because I'm experienced. What you should always do is use the knife away from you, like so. Okay, so you can just remove that sprue nib. I'm going to do it towards me because that's the way I've always done it. And it's the way I'm used to doing it. You should do it your own way, but always cut away from yourself. And always have a sharp blade. Blunt blades are what cuts you. If you try and cut that with a blunt blade, you'll push hard, you'll slip, and then you'll cut yourself. Right, so you can see on here, we have a mould seam. All the way around, it's where the two halves of the mould have come together. You can see a line all the way across. So I'm going to come in with this different knife blade. This is a radius blade. I'm just going to come in and lightly scrape away that seam line. The reason I'm scraping it rather than sanding it initially it's just to remove the excess of it. And there we go. Okay, and then I can come in with my little skinny sanding stick and just sand away to get rid of those seam lines. Now, Again, this is just like what we said with filling up the holes in the chassis and everything. This is not 100% necessary. You don't have to do this. You need to remove sprue nibs. You don't have to remove seam lines. But, although this is a beginner video, I will show you what I'm doing. If this was a video sort of aimed at more advanced modellers like the, um, the Border Models Lancaster I'm doing, then... I would just remove seam lines without even mentioning it because it's just something that more advanced modelers will do. But if you're a beginner and you want to become a more advanced modeler, then this is where you start. And as you can see, I'm not hacking in there and doing loads of sanding. I'm just generally just generally sanding over these areas. There we are. So that's that all cleaned up. Another little tip, which I will pass on, that I always do. When you have been dealing with seams and stuff, if you get your tabby extra thin, you see this is how good this glue is, it's great for everything. Get your tabby extra thin, and then with very little glue on the brush, if you just brush over where you've been sanding, it will remove any sanding marks that are on there. So if you look at here, you can see on the end of here, it's all nice and smooth, and on this one it's all, you can see the sanding marks in it, on there. You can see how quick it dries, I can hold that now. So we remove most of the glue. Okay, so there you are, you can use that to your advantage and then when you paint it it looks a lot better okay so I know this one is d8 so this one is going to go on this side of the chassis so my one mil pin will fit in there and then that one will fit in there okay so we can glue this up just put a drop in there and a drop in there and that will be enough to hold those in position just like that. There we go, that's that one in place. So we'll do the same on the other side, I'll do that off camera and then um, I'll come back when I've finished this step here, step two. Okay, so we've got our springs glued on. One thing I would suggest, get the axle off the sprue and then just 
offer the axle up to the springs and check that these there are two slots one here where's my pointer there's one here and there's one here those two slots check that those two slots line up with the pins on the axe on the springs and then you'll know that you've got your springs okay because obviously the springs could be like this okay they could when you look at an end on they could be in or out so you make sure they're nice and square so I've cut the axle off the sprue because the next thing we'll do is move on to step three and it's getting quite busy step three we've got the front leaf springs to go on we've got the axle with the differential to build up we've got the prop shaft to be fitted we've got the spring shackles going on and we've got this exhaust mounting in here so I've got the exhaust mounting off the sprue I started cutting off and cleaning up and then thought no nope, nice you're supposed to be making a video about this oops okay so this is I can hold this in tweezers this is very cleverly designed you can see on the end there it's kind of like a keyhole shape and then in the chassis we have the corresponding keyhole shape for it to go in so you can't put it in upside down which is quite clever um, I'm just going to sand that face a bit more because because it has a very shallow ejector pin mark in it so we're going to get rid of it there we go that's that gone so we can grab this in our tweezers and we can push this into that hole he says and I don't think it's going to go in there very easily it doesn't fit oh dear okay it's trying to go in but it just doesn't want to quite go in so what you do then it's a quite a tight fit okay so it's just held in there so I'm going to come along with a drop of extra thin Put that on there, let that capillary around and you should find you can just push it in because the glue will almost act as a lubricant. There we are. That's gone in now. So you can see that's gone in and then just a little dab of extra thin afterwards just to make sure it's in properly. So if you ever get that where a pin is tight, if it's not going to go in, it's not going to go in, you have to drill the hole out. But if you ever get a pin going in and it's tight, then it's best to um, just, just put a drop of glue on there and it will make it help, help it slide in. And there we go. So that's that in. So we've done that part there. A habit you might want to get into, get yourself a pencil and then cross the part off as, as you've done it. And then you know you've got everything with these instructions they're fairly simple I mean here you've only got three parts you know here you've only got one two three four five six seven. there's only eight parts some instructions um, particularly like dragon kits they could have 80 or 90 parts in one step so you want to be crossing stuff off and also circle stuff that you don't do which we'll obviously do later on right so we're gonna get this axle together now so we've got the actual axle itself so I've cut it off the sprue I'm just going to remove the sprue nibs from the ends where I cut them off okay and that's that no more cleanup on there we've got a seam line to deal with and then on the actual differential cover casing there or differential casting we've got that there so I'm just going to slightly sand over those ends just to remove any excess sprue nib and then we should find that that will fit in there beautifully. Now, will it go either way? Let's just have a look if we can do this wrong. Okay, it will not fit wrong, so you can only put it in the right way round. So I'll just drop in there like that. And then again, with our extra thin, we can just drop a drop in there. Drop a drop in there, just like so. And then I'm just going to put a drop in the ends. There we go. So we can leave that to dry. And while that's drying, we can get on with our front leaf springs. We've got D5 and D6. We've got our D sprue, 
So we'll get five off. This is number five. Remove the excess sprue nibs. Just like so. And then just gently sand over where those sprue nibs were. Okay, now this sprue nib that was here, we're going to leave that for now because basically we can see when we come to fit the axle the springs are going to be flat so what we'll do is we'll sand that when they're actually on the chassis and hard and dry and then we know we've got a nice flat area for our for our um, axle to go onto. What we're going to do is the mould seams, just going to give them a gentle scrape just to reduce the mould seams as I did before. Just like so. There we go, and then I can come in with my little worn out skinny stick. Just like so, and sand that away. And then again with the extra thin, hardly anything on the brush. You can just brush over those areas just to soften. Leave that for literally a few seconds and then I can hold it. Just to soften any sanding marks. I still have a bit of a seam left on there that I'm going to deal with. So there's a little bit of a mismatch here where the mould tools come together. Instead of being perfect they're slightly off so you get a tiny little you get a line down the middle of the part and I always think on a spring it looks terrible especially when you come to do weathering and stuff and you start putting washes on but that's that's later on as I say this is for beginners you don't need to worry about these scenes if you don't want to they're not going to affect the way the bottle goes together or anything it's just a it just kind of makes things look better so okay so that was number five wasn't it Yes, we've got number five because number six is still on the sprue. So number five goes in this side. So this is going to go into that recess there and into that recess there. Okay, so that's lovely. Fits in there perfectly. Right. So this time I'm going to put a drop of cement in first just so that I can place the spring in position and it will stay there. Just put a very small drop in. And then I can place the spring in and as you can see it will stay there now rather than just fall off. So we're able to push it into position and then come around with some extra thin. Just like that. And get that to go in and just have a look along looking down on it just make sure the spring is vertical okay and then we'll do the other side so I'll do this one off camera then I'll be straight back okay so those spru springs are glued in now just to check they're in the right place what I've done if you push down on the front of the chassis to get it flat onto the board come along with a steel rule as I say the end of that is square and then I'm pushing the steel rule up against the chassis and making sure it goes in between. What I'm actually doing is on the board I'm pushing the, the rule up to the chassis like this and then you can see it's touching the spring in between those two lumps there. Okay so that is how I'm doing it. And then, as a double check, what we can do with the axle still on the sprue, we can come in and check that it's going to fit, and it does, it fits beautifully. And also by doing that, we know that our springs are like this, they're not like that, or like that. We're just going to push the wheels either side. 
So all these little tips, I know they're probably confusing you a bit if you're a dead, you know, dead new beginner, but just rewind the video, watch again, and you'll see the logic in where I'm coming from. It's all simple chassis construction tips that you can take over to any car, any truck, anything you build that's got a chassis, this kind of thing. You know, all the all the World War II trucks and that. Just this will this will be invaluable information for you to get going. Okay, so now that they're in, we're going to look at actually the rest of this. So we've got these shackle plates here, D47, that are going to go onto the springs here. So we're going to find D47, there they are there. So I'm going to cut them off the sprue. Doesn't want to come out, there we go. And then with wind nippers, clean them up. And then just gently over the ends. to remove any excess sprue nibs and then I'm going to come along with my sanding stick I'm just going to gently sand over where these parts are going to fit just to make sure it's all nice and even and then they're going to drop onto there so we can hold that in place A drop of cement on there, I'll hold that in, and then the same on this side, drop that one onto there. Make sure it's square. And then a drop of cement just to hold that in place. And then I'm going to dry fit the axle just to make sure we're all good. As you can see the axle fits on there perfectly because we took the time earlier to make sure our springs were okay. So drop cement into that one. Make sure they're nice and solid and fitted properly. And that they're square and facing fore and aft. All right. Right, so, we've done our springs, we've done D31, we've done the two shackles, we've assembled the axle. Now we're going to put the axle in, but at the same time we need to fit the prop shaft, don't we? Uh, probably. It looks like we might be able to drop it in afterwards. So we'll put the axle in first and then we'll drop the prop shaft in because this is a slot, it's not a hole. So we'll be able to slot it up, put it back and then drop it in. So on here, we have a mould seam. I think we also have a couple of very deep ejector pin marks, unless they are for something to go into, which I don't think they are. They don't look very nice. So you've got these two, you can see, where's my pointer? Use the knife. You can see there's a great big ejector pin mark there, which is horrible. So I'm going to look at how we're going to fill that in. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to get rid of this mould seam. So with the knife, using the straight knife this time, just gently scrape over where the mould seam is. Just to remove it, same on this side. And then with again with a soft sponge, the sanding sponge, just come in and gently sand that because it's round, you use a sponge because it won't leave a flat spot. But you must make sure you scrape the seam off first, otherwise you'll just make the seam look bigger. 
and we've got a bit of a, fl a bit of a, a seam there you can see. I've got a feeling that may be supposed to be there. No, it's not. So I'm just going to sand that away just to blend it in. Okay, and then with some extra thin, hardly any glue on there, we can brush over that. There we go. Now remember this would have been a cast, a big casting, so it wasn't very smooth. So if you want to go a little bit advanced here now, with your extra thin, you can brush them on there. Then you can stipple the brush while the glue is still soft, this glue is still wet, and it will give you a cast finish. Here you go, okay, on here, brush it on. And then just stipple the brush and it will give you a rough finish. Brush some more on. You can also do this with Mr. Surfacer, you can do it with paint. Now you can see on there we've got a rough finish now, like a casting rather than the smooth plastic. Just going to do a bit more there. Here we go. Right. So I'm going to deal with these ejector pin marks here. You don't have to. In fact, I'm just going to check in the instructions. There aren't a location for anything moving forward. Okay, so we're going to look at getting rid of these horrible looking holes in the back of the uh, axle here. So we've got one that side, one that side, and then we've got two smaller ones on either side. So if we go to sprue A, you can see on here we've got these legs where we've cut the chassis rails off. So we can take one of those away. We take a cigarette lighter and then we hold the sprue over the flame. I keep turning it until it starts to sag. Just like so, and then we can pull it. Okay. And you can pull it out so you end up with a very fine line, but I'm just going to put it that far. That's as far as we need to go. And this is what's called stretched sprue. So what I'm going to do now is cut this away about there. So I've got a fairly large piece of plastic there. Okay, I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger. And what we want is this to fit nice and tightly into that hole. Okay, so that's a nice snug fit. So I'll cut this one here about the same. Again, that's a nice snug fit into that hole. I'm going to use super glue purely for speed. Okay. If we use ordinary wet cement, ordinary um, plastic cement, what will happen is it will take forever to dry and then we won't be able to work on it. So I'm just going to grab a drop of super glue. This is the no nonsense stuff. In fact, I won't use that because I haven't opened it yet. I'll use this one here because this one's nearly finished. And the nozzle is probably blocked. Yeah, and this here is a Pringles lid. Now, if you like Pringles, then great because you can buy yourself some Pringles, keep the lids. And the beauty of that is you can put your drop of super glue on a Pringles lid, just like so. You'll see a lot of people put a piece of masking tape down or they'll use a little bottle top or something. The beauty of that is you can't knock it over, you can't put your elbow in it and you can put it out of the way when you don't want it anymore. This thing here, I'm not going to use that am I? So I can just take this heated sprue, dab it in the super glue and then push it into that hole. Okay, just hold it for a few seconds. Now this super glue is quite old, so it's going off, so it'll take a little bit longer than I want to dry. But if you use new stuff, it will dry instantly. Okay, we'll use the new stuff. So we get that glue off of there. Okay, so I've got some uh, new stuff here. So I can just dab that in there. And then push that into that hole.
there we go it dries almost instantly so that's uh, that's the beauty of having a newer glue I just cut that off so that it sits as you can see it's filled that hole in and then we can just cut away it and make the shape we want afterwards so we'll cut that off flush there as you can see now we've actually filled these two outer holes so now we've got the inner holes which are quite big so again we're going to cut this stretch sprue back as you can see it tapers up so as we cut it we increase the diameter a little bit more I'm going to sand this this time because we just want a little tiny bit more there we go, again we can dab that into the super glue, put that in there. We can hear you all shouting, use kicker! The trouble is we've only got two hands. <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to do is spray some kicker on here and then add that in the glue once again and then put that on there and it should kick off straight away. There we go. So we'll do the same on the other side. Just going to sand the end of that flat because it's got a funny shape to it. Okay, I'll spray some kicker on there, dab that in the glue, put that on there and it should dry instantly, there we go. So there we are, so now we can cut that off just like so, we'll cut that one off just like so and now we've got basically we've filled in those holes, so all I've got to do now just come in with my knife and carve away the excess plastic and then sand it. That glue is still soft so I'm going to give that a drop of kicker as well and that one. So we can just carve away now with a knife. Just carve away gently. As I say, if you are a total beginner, don't bother doing this. If you're kind of, you know, you've got a few kits under your belt and you want to move your hobby forward, then these are little tips you can use on your models just to help make them look a bit better. It's a good way of getting rid of an ejector pin mark, especially a big deep one like this has got on a round area. So you can see I've basically Carve that down with a knife, we'll give that a quick coat to cover the sander and it'll be gone. Okay, do the same on this one, just carve it away. There we go. And there we are. Right, I'll finish this off and I'll see you in a second. Hey, pushing on now. <clears throat> I've got the prop shaft off and I've cleaned it all up because you didn't need to seam do that. I basically scraped the seam and then went round with a sanding sponge to remove the seam. There is also on here, you can just make it out, there is an ejector pin mark in the side of the prop shaft and I filled it in the same way with the stretch sprue and super glue and sanded all that back as well. So, um, as you can see I've done the same with the axle. It's far from perfect but it looks a lot better than having those great big holes there in my opinion. 
I mean, you could go over it with some filler and get it all nice and straight and everything, but uh, basically I just think it looks better like that than having those big holes in it. So we're going to fit the prop shaft. Now, I'm not going to glue this in because it's a nice tug fit and it'll just stay there on its own. So as you can see, that will sit there. And then we can offer the prop shaft into the back of the gearbox. And then we can place the axle down on its shackles there. Okay. Now there is a centre bearing there on the prop shaft that goes into that cross member. So with our Tamiya extra thin, <coughs> I can put a drop in there just to lock that into place. And then I can put some in here. Nice big drop of, of uh, I said super glue then. Nice big drop of extra thin in there to lock that axle into position. And then we're good to go. Get a proper weld in there, get a proper firm welded joint. Oops. I touched the glued bit then, so we'll just go over that and I'll smooth that out. And that's what we want. We want that axle to be nice and firmly welded in then we can put a drop of extra thin in there and a drop of extra thin on the axle there just to make sure the prop shafts nicely fixed in and everything's good so we are going to leave this now to dry because the next bit's going to be fitting the front axle in fact now we've got to put the exhaust in first so we're going to put the exhaust in then we're going to fit the front axle and what i'm going to do is make sure that it's going to sit on four wheels by using two parallel bars and make sure that all all four points touch and then what we can do is sand away or whatever to make sure it all touches but uh, that axle is firmly fitted in there it's glued in solid the springs are glued in solid everything is glued in solid it's all kind of melded into one we want a nice solid joint so let's get the axle off the uh, sprues axle exhaust even so that's here and here and we'll get the seams cleaned up on that and then we'll get ready to fit it. Okay, so I've got the axle parts off now and cleaned them up. Gone around with a sanding sponge and dealt with all the seams. <clears throat> with the end of the exhaust, you can see it's been moulded with a, with a bit of a hole in it, but it's not very convincing. So what I'm going to do, if you don't have any drills, what you can do is use a new knife point. And just come in. And just with very little pressure, open up that hole to make it deeper and larger in diameter so you thin out the section around the outside and make it look more like a tin exhaust pipe than a great big piece of scaffolding and then just put a drop of extra thin in the end okay and that will and that will look a lot more accurate than having that tiny little hole in there okay when you put some matte black paint in there it look just like the end of a thin exhaust so that's that the other thing is in the side of the silencer here we've got another couple of horrible ejector pin marks in the sides there so I'm going to show you another way of doing them because they're quite shallow so I'm just going to grab some super glue and place a drop in each one just like so, and I'm putting, I'm purposely putting too much in there. And then spray some activator on there just to make them go off quicker. I want to see if they've gone off. Yep. So what I can do now is come in with a soft sanding stick. Just sand away this super glue. Until I get the nice round shape. So I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't get all the dust going into the super glue. You can just sand that super glue away, you can see it 
get a white edge around it so you can see where you are. Once that white edge disappears, you know you're flush. It's an exhaust silencer, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It could have been dented or rusty or whatever. There we go, and then with a the sponge, just go over it. As you can see there, the ejector pin mark has gone. Same on this one. And it's gone. All gone. So there you are. Right. So we can fit the exhaust now. So basically it's telling us in the instructions here, we're on to stage step four. So it's telling us here to fit the, the exhaust first before the axle because obviously you won't be able to get the, the exhaust to go under the axle. So we can just drop that in there. We can test fit that, that goes in there, that goes in there. So that's a beautiful fit. So we've got two square lugs there going into two square holes and we've got the round hole at the front. So with a drop of extra thin, move that one in there, move that one in there, just give it a little push down and then this front one, Because my tweezers just needs a little tiny nudge backwards to get it to go in the hole and it doesn't want to stay in there. It's sort of springing up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a, grab even a drop of super glue, put it in the hole and then push the exhaust down into it. So we get an instant bond. And there we go. So that's our exhaust fitted. Then the tailpipe is going to go into the back of the silencer. And then there is a square cutout in the chassis. If I use my tweezers, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. There's a square cutout in the chassis here. So that's going to fit into the back of the silencer, and then that's going to go in the chassis cutout. But the fit in the silencer is fairly tight. So once again, drop of extra thin, this will make things easier. Just push that in, and then that little lug on there. We'll go into the chassis and I'm going to use my extra thin quick setting purely because it's quick setting and I won't have to sit here holding it forever, holding it in place. I'm not using super glue here because if we knock the exhaust and it's glued with super glue it'll probably ping off. So there's our very very well secured exhaust system. One, two, three, four contact points, that's really good. And there we are. So there's our exhaust in. I have just noticed that I didn't properly remove the seam from that edge there. So if we just gently rub that with a knife. Gently sand it. And then brush some extra thin on. That will make sure it's gone. There we are. So there's our exhaust in place. Okay. So we're kind of halfway through step four now. And then what we've got to do is add the axle. Now this is where things get serious. I've got this axle off the sprue. I've got it cleaned up. I've got rid of any seams, although there probably would be a seam down the middle of this anyway, because it's cast or forged. So there probably would be a seam down the middle anyway, but the trouble is with modeling, if you leave a seam, it looks like a plastic seam rather than a forging. So it's best to take it off. Um, so what we're going to do now is make sure that when we glue this axle on, that everything's nice and square. Now, is this axle 
symmetrical? Yes, it is. And there are some very shallow ejector pin marks in there. So I should be able to, with a radius blade, just scrape them away. This is how you can see now, I, I, I think I did mention it in a previous video. <laughs> it's very... Just brush some extra thin there where I've scraped. It's easy to start painting everything first, but when it comes to assembly like this, you're scraping everything, removing marks. You know, when we sanded this joint on the chassis, imagine if it was all painted, it would be a nightmare. So what we'll do is fit this axle on here, and it fits beautifully because we took our time and got those springs correct. But what we want to do is check that everything's going to sit nice and level. So what I'm going to do is glue this axle in with a small drop of cement, just enough, just to hold it in place so that when I tip it over it doesn't fall off. We can place that down on the bench. Now, what we need is two parallel bars. Now you could use, I don't know if these are high enough. No, you could use sanding sticks. Uh, you could use a couple of pencils. I actually, I'm lucky in that I have a couple of aluminium bars, which are parallel. Okay, so I can use these. What I'm going to do is put the chassis in so that the stub axles on the end of the axles are going to sit on this on these aluminium bars. And I'm going to make sure there we go. So I've just got the stub axles in at the back, and I've got the front axle just on the ends, and I want to make sure that it doesn't have any rock in it. So if I touch the chassis, it shouldn't rock. And that is some beautiful engineering there from Airfix. It's gone together as per the instructions, no modifications, and we have perfect contact points. So what we can do now is come on the extra thin and put a decent amount in there to weld that axle into position. And then we'll just double check so we've got stub axles there held in at the back so I'm just going to push down on the axle aha now we've got a bit of rock Yeah, you can see we've got a bit of rock now. So what I'm going to do is just try and give the chassis a twist. So pushing down on the axle. And now it's gone the other way, so I'll just give the chassis a gentle twist the other way. And there we go, it's gone. So, we'll leave that to dry like that. It may well end up being slightly out again, but what we'll do is when we glue it to the floor, we can make sure that we've got it right then. The other thing I may well do is, if you look in the instructions, when we go over to step five, it's telling us to build the wheels up and assemble them onto the axles. Problem with that is, if then when we glue the floor to the bottom of the chassis, the, the, the chassis to the bottom of the floor, if we have to clamp it and it pulls the chassis out of shape, we won't have all four wheels touching the ground. So I may well leave fitting the wheels until the end. And then what we can do, if we have one wheel slightly high, we can open the hole up in the wheel and it will allow us a little bit of play to have the wheel out of line. But it's looking like everything here is good. If I put the chassis down this way, we don't have any rock or anything. So I know that my chassis is straight. We've got a slight amount of twist back in there again. 
So what I'm going to do is lift this away, take this front axle away, and I am going to remove a tiny amount of plastic from this side. I'm just going to come in with a stick. Just sand those areas nice and flat. And then refit the axle. So I've just realised what I didn't do, I didn't sand those axles flat before I fitted the axle, did I? Which is what I said I was going to do. Okay. So that little bit of scraping material. Okay, we've still got it on that side. So I just want to remove some more material from this one. Is it this? Yes, this one, isn't it? Just like so, only a tiny amount. There's enough glue on there just to make it kind of stick in place. There we go, we're all nice and level now. So I'm going to put some more glue in there. Just like so. Give that axle a bit of a squeeze. And then we're just going to check. It's tiny, tiny, tiny amount, so I'm not going to worry about that. There we go, job done. So we can leave all that to dry now and not mess with it at all. And, uh, and that'll be that. So, I believe we are now at around about an hour. So I think we'll call that a day. So we've now completed everything up to step, the end of step four. We're still not painting anything because we can put all these fuel tanks on, paint them. As I say, I probably won't fit the wheels now. I may do actually because it's a beginner build and we want to follow the instructions. But um, I'll probably paint the chassis and everything before we fit the wheels. So we'll probably do all this and then fit the wheels afterwards. Because then we're into body work then. And the next time we see the chassis is when we fit the body to the chassis. So we can get all this finished up get all this painted, have the tyres all nicely painted and that ready to strap the body on. So um, there we go. So I'm happy with that, how that's looking. The other thing you can do is just eye it up, look down it and you'll see if anything's wildly out. But um, it's a good little tip, especially if you're doing something with like, you know, four axles or three axles or whatever. If you've built a model and one wheel is sitting up in the air, it looks awful. You want all four wheels, all eight wheels, whatever, to be touching the ground. Of course, the other thing you can do, once it's all together, if you've got you know one wheel up in the air, you can sand the other three and give them a bit of a flat spot. Looks like three tyres are a bit softer than the other. But you want all four wheels to be touching the ground. That's the, that's the main objective of doing all this work with this chassis. So there you can see we've got a beautiful little chassis. It is a beautifully designed kit. It really is nice and it's going together lovely. And I really hope you are enjoying this and following along. Uh, the other thing we can do is add some rust to this exhaust silencer. Okay, so we can come along with that and then just, again, with the extra thin, just brush it around and it gives it a little bit of a rough finish. Okay, so when you paint it, it looks like rust. Right, so as I say, we're gonna leave it there let that all go off for a good few hours and we're going to leave it alone and then we can come come on I'll see you in part four and we'll get these wheels together and I've got a feeling we're going to have to be really careful with these wheels because I think we're going to be able to mess up I'm not sure but we will see so I'll see you in a minute 
Well, I won't see you in a minute. I'll see you uh, next week, whatever, for part four. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon. As I say, any questions, any comments, stick them down below, and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right. Bye for now.